You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Total Divas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Total Divas After Show. Hey, can somebody call my mama? It's about to get <laughs> yeah, that's You're doing right. a little dance with it. Yeah, because it's me, it's me, it's show T-I-M-E, and next to me is the voice of choice, Christian Rosenberg, and I'm I'm getting a little claustrophobic in this small studio here. Oh, it's a race one. It's okay. It's okay, Josh. We can rock the Studio B like nobody else. That's Be- right. Because Bing is for doing, and we are doing another Total Divas after buzz for you today. Wait, this is Total Divas? This is Total Divas, and there are no Divas here. Where, where are they? We we are playing the role of the Divas today. All we, right. But, <laughs> what you got for me? but I mean, granted, we are per, we are pretty much the After Buzz Divas. You're the Diva of Raw. I'm the new Diva of SmackDown. Oh, that's right. Uh, so, Got an so we're bringing it now to Total Divas, though, for episode number five, Feuding Funkadactyls. And this was kind of like the the serious, in-your-face, argumentative episode that I actually think was maybe the first one where we might actually have some disagreement on in certain yes. topics. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm getting jacked up about this show. You, I mean, well, the show I'm is, like, the show is beyond go. guilty pleasure. It is beyond a guilty pleasure. Yes, I, well, yes, because it's wrestling and it's reality TV. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's it's the cream of the crop, and uh, it's of the girls. Yeah, but uh, really, like it's it's raw, and then NXT and Total Divas, like all they, rolling into one. They're like my that's my that's my 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 trinity right there of wrestling <laughs> right now. Uh, like yes, this episode was heavily like it lots of controversy. I'm sitting next to Corey last night watching this thing. And of course, I'm just like save it for the show, save it for the show, because like I didn't want to give her. I mean, I know that me and her were disagreeing on a lot of stuff, and I'm very interested to see where you where you stand. All right. Um, but I just want to say, since since we missed last week, uh, I want to say first of all, Tyson Kidd hashtag heel, the biggest <laughs> heel move I've ever seen in my life. That man got Natty in his in in the living room, laying down on the sofa with him in full on lingerie. Man doesn't even bat an eye. Just stares at the TV. What a heel. Biggest heel move you can do to a woman. All right. Awesome. Well, and you're st- well, you're I'm st- wait- I can't wait you're for stuck his comeback. On, you're stuck on last week. <laughs> so this week but this blew week, me away. And it's funny that you used the word Trinity earlier because we yes. want to start. Look at these segues. I'm so good with these. But we start with Trinity and Ariane. We're going to talk about the Funkadactyls and just the complete, utter disaster they're, they're – business relationship is turning into as yeah. the season progresses so it starts off they have a day off trinity wants to relax because when you're on the road 200 some odd nights a year it's nice to have a day off to just relax and ariane bugs there's like no we're going out we're going shopping you're gonna buy some stuff and all that all that jazz so all of a sudden it leads to they got invited to go to some like opening of some ex- museum exhibit or some. It, it was it was in L.A. and I I I recognize that street. I've been there before and I've had dinner close by there, so I know. Um, I know. I think that was a. It looked like it was an art gallery type mm-hmm. opening or or maybe even a restaurant. I mean, that looks like an art gallery, but uh, yeah, <sighs> Vinny. Vinny bothers me, man. I don't like him. I wasn't even thinking about Vinny in this because Vinny was barely in this. Oh, movie. but the mu- but he made it. He made it work for that those thirty seconds he was on <laughs> camera. I was like, ugh, just him. Like, oh my god, look at this. This look look at the, the paparazzi here. Oh, I'm eating this. Like, dude, 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 John, John. I can't believe we're here. I'm like, no, they're not here for you, man. They're not. Up. They were not there for Vincent. That is for sure. They were there. No. For Cameron and Naomi, aka Trinity and Arion, but Trinity. She doesn't want to be there because she wants to focus on her career. She's like, you know, these are all fun, and I don't mind dressing up for these things once in a while, but I want 
to do this because I love wrestling. Right. And this proved to me once and for all that Arion could care less about the actual wrestling and just wants the fame, the glitz, the glamour, taking the And photos. this is just an avenue for her precisely to, to, to achieve that. All right, I'll give you that because, like I said, tough enough two years ago. Melina versus Alicia Fox. <laughs> Good God. Greatest uh, match of all that's time. Her, that's her favorite match. Um, and then uh, unapolog un unapologetically just stares at Stone Cold. Yeah, I'm, I'm new to this, and that's my favorite match. So screw off Stone Cold Steve Austin, greatest of all time. Uh, however, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go on to Ariane's side and say that Trinity needs to realize that these things are, in, in this day and age, are just as important as knowing a hammerlock. You need to get your name out there. You need to, you need to keep up with the Joneses. And I think Ariane has a, a, a good point there to, hey, Trinity, you need to come out to these things with me, and we need to make a splash because up until before this Total Divas thing, we were barely getting any screen time, and no one knows who we are. And now that we have this TV show, we've got to milk it for all it's worth so that you can keep on wrestling, and maybe I can do my own reality show eventually or, or do whatever the heck she wants to do. I agree with you on the fact that, yeah, in order to be real successful, you need to find the happy medium in between the two. The Bellas have that happy medium in between the two. They go to the shoots, they do the interviews, they do the press things, but then they're still always on the road ready to perform in their roles. Trinity is on one far end, and Ariana's on the other far end, and somehow they got to lock in. Well, my question to you about the Bellas, how did that like two-year break go for them? Right? Didn't they leave WWE a few years ago and say, like, oh, we're, we're leaving now and we're going to take some time off and, and concentrate on our own stuff? Didn't exactly pan out for them. Now they're back in the machine again. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that happens, and that happens to a lot of people, men and women, yeah. that are part of the WWE. Sometimes they'll leave to try to work on things. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes, you know, if you leave on the good terms and know that you would be welcome back, that you're still young enough, that you're still in good shape, then – They'll welcome you back, and that's what happened with the Bellas. Yeah, for sure. To be fair, they left because of injuries. They did. I, I want, that's what I was uh, kind of getting at was I was wondering, did they, they must have left on good terms, but right. I didn't know if they had left. Be, so they both got banged up or just like, well, well I'm not being on stay. the road for so many, so much time for so many years, of course they're going to have injuries imagine. that you need to heal. So that And that's part of the game. Yeah. And the interesting thing is I don't know that Ariane realizes that yet. Just you want an AfterBuzz after exclusive? AfterBuzz exclusive? Phil's feet that give us no. an AfterBuzz exclusive. No, because uh, at the time, you know, I knew exactly what was going on at the time. Because, um, you know, we, we got emails um, saying, like, hey, the Bellas will be leaving the WWE for an indefinite amount of time. You know, they want to do something in L.A., um, and they wanted to kind of continue doing stuff with the WWE, and they were going to be the hosts of Monday Night Raw for AfterBuzz TV. Oh. Uh, it didn't quite pan out schedule wise, and you know they had other obviously other things developed during that time for them, but uh, that was in the works. Oh man, that would have been awesome because they're like they're Southern California based. You know that would have been a pretty mm -hmm. easy, uh, easy transition for them. Well, nope, that's, that's that a shame. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But, but at least at least they're on TV. Uh, you they're know, they're still rocking them. out on Raw because I don't mind watching them and SmackDown and Total Divas for that matter. We go to NXT, Ariane and Trinity are there to get ready to work on – they want to work on a, a little new routine for when they're entering the ring with tons of funk. And Trinity has this elaborate plan of these very um, very agile, very sexy-type dance moves. Gymnastic, gymnastic, gymnastic moves. style dancing, yeah. And Ariane just wants to walk. Yep. Just, like, kind of walk around flick, and face the camera. Flick, flick the hair back, whip it back, and yeah. then uh, – and and just prance around. Yeah, this, this And again, we got to find the happy medium. Trinity can do those crazy gymnastic moves. Ariane, I'm guessing cannot, which is why she didn't do it. Yeah. So Trinity has to adjust it so it works for Ariane as well, but at the same time Ariane, you got to do more than just walk around if your roles are to be these kind of sexy dancer type cheerleaders, right, for Brodus Clay and Tensai. And, again, they're falling far apart on that, which then leads us to the go-kart race. Yeah, and this is not, this <laughs> is not uh, you know, and you can clearly see that this is, you know, it's, it's the, the sibling rivalry. It, you know, you get two people together, two good, you know, and they, they become friends. 
and then you can see how much Ariane is has a, she she lacks a lot more in when it comes to athleticism, wrestling, and then she, that's the business that she's in. And I don't like how Trinity says, "Hey, let's do this." It's like Trinity, you know, she can't do that. You're proving a point. That's not cool. But then Ariane is not even going to attempt it. She's just telling her, well, I, we're not doing that because – because why? Because you can't do it? But Trinity, you, you shouldn't have put her out there like that. You need to find a happy medium. So when you go to this go-kart thing, I don't know what, what – th this is like a clear like reality TV thing, We have right? the day off. What do four girls do? Go-karting. Oh, we'll go go-karting. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my God. You know. But yeah, Ar Ariane is so obsessed with winning this little go-kart race that means absolutely nothing. Like it was one thing if they even like placed a wager – Play some type of bet on it, which we never saw. It was just Ariane's like, I have to win, I have to win. Ariane ends up winning and just starts, like, rubbing it in all three of their faces, on Trinity's face, Eva Marie's, and JoJo's faces. And Trinity's just like, whatever, and, it's not a big deal. Dude. And why would someone do that? Why would someone Why would that? she rub that, a meaningless thing like that, in Trinity's face? Because it's one of the few times that she feels like she was better than Trinity. Yes, she has a big self-esteem issue. Bless her heart. And I bet, I bet, and you can tell by the man that she's with. Ariane, it's time to move on. Wow, you're okay. turning into a psychologist here today. <laughs> That's right. I'm Dr. Josh, all right? <laughs> it's showtime with Dr. Josh, okay? I'm telling you right now, this is, she, she knows exactly what the problem is. And it, and it was such a huge reveal later on in the show. But it's clearly, when you see her in the ring and she just folds her arms and says, we're not doing that dance, you don't say why. She says, like, oh, I can't do that, and we're just not going to try. You should try at least. And then she's like, oh, I can't do it. And that's fine. Uh, I can't do that crap. You think I can? <laughs> yeah, you know, right? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, so it, it was not a huge surprise that she's sitting there, oh, man. And then, like, and, and Trinity's got the, the Tr patience of Trinity's of doing everything she possibly can to hold her Putting temper. Her hands in the face. Oh, she's doing I, everything I until, she's... until finally oh, Trinity's okay. had enough and gives her a little shove. No, well, Trinity messed up here. This is where I'm on, I'm on Ar Ariane's side. I know why you're doing this, because of your low self-esteem. But Trinity should not have, and she, they're, they're both at fault here. Trinity says, oh, well, that, I, I'm better in the ring, is basically what she said. I do the matches. Because she do does. Go -go and she does. We all know that. Clearly, Ariane knows that, because she's, she's all giddy about this stupid go-kart race. She knows that, Trinity, you, sh you should be the bigger man, the bigger girl, and, and not rub that in her face. So she took it to the next level. Trinity, bad girl. That you, you, went, you went the wrong direction there because you took it to the next level. This was about a go-kart race. It's about her low self-esteem. Let her have her moment. You, you pushed that in her face. So now Ariane, uh-uh-uh, you don't say that stuff to me. <laughs> and then Trinity, I just and then love, what does Trinity I do? love how it turned into a bunch of like teenage girls fighting. Do you have siblings? Yes. Uh, you got sisters, right? I got two sisters and a brother. All right, I have a, I have a little brother as well. Okay. Okay. We always said when you get in an argument with each other, the moment one of you touches, this is psych, psych 101. Yep. The moment you have to touch the other person when you're having an argument, you've lost. You are touching someone because you cannot win this argument, and you are grasping on, you're grasping on as hard as you can. So the moment Trinity said, uh, and pushed her, no, no, Trinity, it's done. You already took it to the next level, and now you pushed her. Now you're, now you're escalating even further. But here's, here's where I partially disagree with you. Okay. Trinity, yes, you should not condone her shoving her at all. That was wrong, and that escalated the things. But then Arion could have took that to an advantage and be the bigger person and walked away. Is what Ariane it, the bigger person, though? Clearly not. She's not. Because then she pushes her at full force with a little kid six inches away from them. And I can't believe that that was never talked about at all. <laughs> Total divas. The rest, the rest of the episode. The fact be that a there star, was WWE. high face and shoved with this little kid walking back and forth from the go-karts right next to them. Yep. And they're pretty much good they, role models. They there. get in a shoving match at this go-kart place. Adults. Adults at this go-kart place where there's probably like an eight-year-old's birthday party going on. Those are the fun dactyls, mom. <laughs> oh, get out my face, man. Uh uh. Oh, there it is. So then it leads to them. Um, at the Raw tapings, where they're told they're going to have a six-person tag match, and Trinity and Ariana Bruce like, no, we're not, we're not working together. You can't do that. This is WWE. Who, who says that? Yeah. What? I'm on TV. Great. Thanks. 
Good. Can, can, Payday. Uh, I mean, can you can you imagine like uh, I mean even three MB? Can you imagine Gender and Drew saying like we're not working together tonight? Vince, sorry for people that are sorry, not Triple wrestling H. fans but Total Divas fans. Three MB is a group of three guys on WWE. There might be some people that don't watch wrestling. Who, who watch are Total low Divas. on the totem pole? Yes, like when it, they're low mid carters. They're just jobbers, and uh, and yeah, you think their tag team would they would they say that? Would they be like oh Heath Slater's like no, I, me and Drew got in a, an argument and uh, it got, got to some shoving, and I'm not doing that. Right. So then they yeah, end, they wouldn't have done that. They end up having a meeting with Stephanie McMahon, who pretty much like you know the the behavior is unacceptable, unprofessional. When oh, Natty said this is not good, guys. Yeah. Well, Natty's like you're having a meeting with Stephanie. That ain't good. <laughs> Natty's like, how do I get a meeting with Steph? You know. <laughs> now, yeah. Natty wants a meeting with <laughs> Stephanie, but not for these reasons. And so Stephanie's like, all right. Well, tonight we're gonna we're gonna switch things up. We're gonna give both of you singles matches tonight. Let's you, see. You let's remember see those how you matches, do. right? They were on main event, right? I remember the Naomi one. Yeah. Or, or, or Trinity. Uh, she <laughs> Easy she to wrestled Alicia, the Cameron one. Yeah. Uh, she wrestled the uh, Alicia Fox, who is another WWE diva, and they had a solemn match. The big thing that they critiqued on Total Divas was Trinity over jumping on a uh, cross body, mm -hmm. which is for those of you that don't watch wrestling that listen to the show, is a move where you're literally jumping in the air, kind of flat. And the goal is to land on your opponent's chest, and then they chest fall down, and it's, it turns into a cover. So Trinity overjumped it a little bit and pretty much landed on Alicia Fox's head. Here's the thing. They're talking in the back how Trinity overjumped it, Trinity overjumped it. Hey, Alicia Fox also did not react to it. Yes. And did not step back and get it adjusted. That was both sides – had a little error there. And mistakes can happen. Mistakes happen all the time in WWE. We've seen people perform high risk. There's a reason they call it high risk when you're jumping off the top rope because there's a higher chance that you're going to mess up. Yeah. And that brings the reality into wrestling. Just watch any Sin Cara match. <laughs> there's a mess up or overcalculation <laughs> every time. So, so then that's pretty much the one complaint about Trinity's match. Then Ariane, a.k.a. Cameron – has a match against another WWE diva named Oksana, and that match was just terrible. Yeah, well, how dare you pair with Oksana? You, you know how bad Cameron is. Like, why are you gonna pair up with Oksana? That's not fair. So just just a lot of just a lot of odd pacing, odd footwork, Very not fast. falling correctly. They said she was just rolling through it. She was just trying Very to nervous. go as fast as possible because she was nervous. Wanted to get out of there. I mean, that's the type of stuff that you work on at the NXT facilities where they were working on their dancing earlier in the show. Because Trinity went to FCW, right? She Yeah, she was a part there. of NXT, yeah. yeah. Or NXT, uh, yeah. Well, which used to be FCW. And when it's all said and done, the two of them kind of like, you know what? It didn't feel right being out there without you. Let's be BFFs again, besties, Funkadactyls, I love, hooray. I love how they were, both of them, were stretching so hard trying to figure out what Ariane is good at. And they ended up, Trinity, all she could say was, you you got the spirit, you know? I'm like, don't ever <laughs> tell me. That's like, <laughs> that's what guys used to tell me on my baseball team. Hey, man, you got all the heart in the world. Josh, Josh when, it comes to, when it comes to After Buzz, you really got a lot of spirit. I'm the spirit <laughs> of the After Buzz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was so bad. It's like, oh, you're so good, Trinity. And then, all right, my turn. Trinity, go ahead and say something nice. Oh, um, you know, you got all that spirit stuff, you know? Yeah. I need that. You know, eh, they they tried their best to to show that they both need each other, but I, you know, Trinity's not going to need her in the future. No, and they, and like you said, it was not Trinity. It wasn't completely Trinity's fault. It was it was, it was the match. give and take between Trinity and Alicia in that um, particular in that one particular move. But you you could wipe most of those girls out, uh, you know, and, and and bring up the NXT chicks anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, but, speaking of wipeout, let's just wipe out our one moment where on Total Divas that we saw Eva Marie and JoJo, which was just at the very very beginning of the show. Uh, we there's decided. The moment. There's the moment. Uh, they decided to put on bronzer to go down to the gym to try to impress the guys, and in the gym in the hotel, they run into WWE superstar Roman Reigns. And they do. Wait, first of all, they're doing 30 second planks. Are you kidding me, girls? Y'all are on WWE TV. Y'all need to do more than 30 second planks. I mean, Kaori does 60 second planks. Well, I mean, you you could probably do 30 second planks right here. I, I, 
we'll, we'll, we'll maybe we'll find out on a different time. I'm not. <laughs> I, know I'm, I could get. I'm not those. in my gym gear. Yeah, of course, to, of course. To rock but out. Yeah, they're doing thirty seconds. Yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, Eva Marie, she's doing. The, she's pulling the Ariane crap. Like, oh, let me let me tell you something, JoJo. I I know you you can sing very well, and I don't really have anything. Uh, I <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. You need to wear a bronzer. JoJo needs to wear bronzer. Really? Yeah. JoJo needs to wear bronzer. Yeah. Why okay. Not? All right. All right, put some bronzer on but, JoJo. So, so they're very happy that they met Roman Reigns, WWE Superstar, who apparently they've never met in the back yet. I met him last Monday. You met him last Monday, which we'll, you will probably hear about on the Monday Night Raw after Buzz later yeah. tonight. And pretty much they just ta- kind of talked to him for a minute, and then Eva Marie's like, JoJo, that's why we wear bronzer to the gym. And that's oh! all we had of Eva Marie and JoJo this entire episode. Yeah, Kaori was liking that, too. She she. She'd like to bump into Roman Reigns at the gym, too. Oh, all right. Not as much as Antonio Cesaro, probably, but <laughs> but it's good. He's a good-looking man. Uh, what's his real name? How do you how do you pronounce that? Antonio Cesaro's name? No, no, uh, Roman Reigns. Oh, I don't know. I, I know. I, 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 that's a tough <laughs> Samoan name. But you know what's easy? You know what is easy? What's that? Not Besides not saying Roman Reigns' real name? Going to iTunes and giving us five star ratings yes. and liking and subscribing and of course checking out AfterBuzzTV.com where you can see the schedule of all your favorite shows and and see what your hosts are up to and we always ask we always always ask whether it's on AfterBuzz TV on iTunes or on YouTube to make sure you leave comments and tell us what you like what you don't like if you got questions for us so we can make the all the great AfterBuzz shows better and more entertaining for all of you at home just like how you all really enjoy i'm sure two guys talking about a bunch of divas <laughs> sorry yeah we're just gonna dance a little bit now for those of you listening to the podcast we're just dancing <laughs> Funkadackles. Funkadackles. so let's let's get to the the one serious issue of today's total divas yes and that's with the bella twins and their problems with their with their father, who left them when they were, I think, 15. Um, and then, you know, they were pretty much at that point, they were raised by their grandparents. How could you leave twin girls that, that are that pretty, you know? Like, that's tough. Addiction's a hell of a thing. And that's what they were saying, right? That he uh, he, he was fighting he's, addictions. He's fighting addictions. Um, it seems like the brother has kind of, and, and, and Bree seems like she's reconciled with them, but Nikki was having issues reconciling with uh with her dad and uh yeah so uh, brie says like listen you know let's uh I-, I think what was the occasion why why was she saying that they want well like i guess they were, were they, they were in, the in area? an area or he was going to be in the area with them so brie was going to meet up with their grandmother nana nana and, i love nana and their brother to go and go visit um, her father as well, yeah. and Nikki didn't want anything of it because she's like afraid to see him at this point because it's been so long, yeah. and they have just such a rocky relationship. So Bree could not convince Nikki to go with her. Who could? If your twin sister can't convince you to see your your, your twin sister, own father. if your grandmother can't, and, and your grandmother can't, who? WWE superstar John Cena can. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Super Cena. Do John, it, man. John Cena is the voice of reason for everything in Nikki Bella's life. I need a John Cena in my life. I need so <laughs> he needs to come to my house and sit down with me, and tell me what I need to do. Because I mean, he's got answers for everything. And that's the thing: John Cena is breaking everything down to her in just such a easy to understand, respectful, professional way. Woo! While teaching her Chinese, mind you. Teach her Chinese. Apparently, he knows Chinese. He's got a picture of of the the uh, of World War Two FDR Trinity, of FDR and Church, uh, Churchill. Churchill and Stalin. And man, he's got the patience there. He's got a lot of patience there. She's like, oh, is that Churchill? It's like, nah, it's um, no, that's Stalin. That's Stalin. <laughs> I'm just like, Stalin. man, John. And Nikki's kind of like, Nikki, which one was the helping. president? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, he yeah. What? But John Cena helps her build the confidence. As he does to all of his fans around the WWE all around the world. He helps them build the confidence Amen. to super be Cena. whoever they can be because he's Super Cena. So he convinces Nikki, and she tells Brie, all right, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And they meet up, and they have, um, they have a little tearful discussion with, with her father. Yep. And Must be hard with the cameras there. Like to, well, yeah. You know, to have that kind of conversation. Because you, you know, know, you know, there's probably a point where like they're doing it, and they'll be like, "All right, can you say that part again?" Yeah. 
It's uh, like y'all had there had to have been a they had to have done this conversation beforehand, and they go, okay, let's repeat it, or leave some certain things out. I mean, my God, that must knows? be hard. But I mean, it was it was like a serious emotional conversation about a girl who really feels like, for you know, half of her life at this, or a little more than half of her life at this point, she has not had her father. Yeah, and. The, you know, their father was getting emotional with it, too, and is like, I'm trying whatever I can to try to fix myself and to be a part of your life, and hearing this from you makes me want to try even harder. So it was actually, like, a really nice moment, and it was a very real moment because, obviously, this is a situation that happens to millions and millions of people with, um, you know, without a father or mother that's kind of left them when they were young. And so it was really interesting that they brought it on. Yeah. And it really shows because, I mean, the Bellas out of all of them, I mean, except for like even Marie, uh, just seem to be so in character the whole time. And they're just there's no there's as little humanity, especially with Nikki, uh, with everybody. And this like this this episode really showed that out like, oh, wow, there's, these aren't just the Bella twins, the heels, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the heels of Total Divas. They and have hearts. Of Raw. Yeah, exactly. They, there's, there's a real girl under there, you know. And then but though we go from the real girl to at the towards the end of the show. Nikki acknowledges that she gets turned on every time she watches John Cena wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. That butt. Oh, and he's half naked. And, hey, he's and wearing those shorts the whole time. And those <laughs> Super yeah. Cena. Exactly. Yeah. And she calls and she calls Bree's boyfriend Daniel Bryan a lumberjack. Yeah. Well, yeah. She. she <laughs> <laughs> and he's got all those moves, you know. He does. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I, I really like this. It was uh, it was good. Um, give, it, it just it's good to show that the, the these people they're not just the characters that they play on TV. You know, uh, I love that John Cena. They made John Cena be the one that convinced her. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, he, he there's not any obstacle in real life. John or Cena in the can ring do no wrong. He can't overcome. John Cena is that good. So that's kind of the story with the Bellas, and then. We got the craziness that is Natty's birthday week. She gets a birthday week, not a birthday. Classic. But a birthday week. Classic chick move. Her birthday happens to be when WWE is in Calgary, her hometown. So she's super excited about that. She's going to get to wrestle on Raw on her birthday. Big deal to her. Big deal. Oh, you know, Tyson's come. Tyson, her boyfriend's coming up with her. We're going to have fun. We're going to celebrate her birthday. And we get lots of phone calls from Tyson's mother, who Natty doesn't hate, but doesn't have the greatest relationship with. Right. And Tyson was under the impression that the, we'll just stay at my mom's place while you're gone. And Natty's like, no, she has a one-bedroom apartment. I would have to share a bed with her. And, and meanwhile, you have to sleep, sleep on, the, on couch. the couch. I got a hotel room already. We'll go there. We'll see her while we're there, of course. We'll see her at a point, but we're not going to stay with her. Right. Go ahead. This is I where <laughs> I, I'm so happy Kaori kind of missed this episode because me and her would have been going off the chain. And I would not right be able now. to get a word in, is what you're oh, saying? It would have been, okay. it would have been, it would have been messy. I would have had to be very careful. State your piece, but sir. she's not here, uh, yeah, listen, uh, ladies, you get one day. All right? That's the name of the game. Everyone, it's called birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> not birth week, okay? So, Natty, I'm, uh, <laughs> congratulations. You, you, you made it another year. Uh, you get one day. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Who is that singing? Phil, who was that supposed to be singing? Paris Hilton. Happy birthday. Oh, oh <laughs> thank you, Paris. Oh, if this was 2004, I'd be excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, I am. This this sucks because I've I've I've. Uh, I've been in this situation many a time. Well, well, as far as the birthday now, that Tyson kids have been put in because yes, I'm a mother, I'm a mama's boy as well as Tyson kid is. Uh huh. And uh, Kaori, uh, her birthday is two day, three days after Christmas. It's on the twenty eighth. Okay. And since I've known her, I fly home for Christmas. 
to see my family. I see my family twice a year. Mm -hmm. They live on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. We're out here on the West Coast. And this has been a po an argument that me and her have had like every year, pretty much. Sure. That Natty and Tyson were having. Listen, it's my you know it's my birthday. You're never here on my birthday. I'm like, look, we'll celebrate it right before I leave. I'm not there on the day of. I'm not gonna turn around and come back right after you know, mm -hmm. right after Christmas. You know, I want to see the family. Uh, so yeah, we we were getting into it last night watching this because I see it unfold. When I see it unfold, I'm like, oh Tyson, why are you doing this? But then like I know what he's going through. Like uh, a mother's love, and especially when you're a mama's boy, that the power they have over, it, you know, it's it's scary because you you look at it and you're like, oh no, you should stand up for Natty. But then you look at Natty, and then I, and of course. The man comes out of it. I'm like, Natty, you got to chill out, all right? But Tyson needed to step up. He needed to give her at least that one date. Um, may, may, I, may I? Go ahead. May I state my opinion? Go ahead. Okay. Because part of, part of what you said I agree with. Part of it I don't. Birthday, yes, it's only one freaking day. Um, now, we also don't know what birthday it was for Natty. So, you know, if it was like a big, like, you know, like your – 21st or 25th or 30th or 40th whatever you know whatever number it was i can understand and say birthday falls on a friday is like or a saturday oh maybe do something fun for the weekend over my birthday but like say your birthday's on a tuesday mm -hmm. oh it's my birthday week so i'm gonna celebrate all week no you're not you're just gonna celebrate on that tuesday yep that's the end of that oh but i want to do something on the weekend too well uh. go ahead it's not for your birthday yeah <laughs> but when it comes to Tyson and his mother, woo! All right, you're in Calgary. Tyson's mom is there. Great. Natty can say, "Hey, it's my birthday. This is what we're gonna do. We'll definitely see your mother because it'd be good to see her to catch up. We'll go get lunch or we'll go get dinner one day with her. If there was also a day when I'm at Raw, since you're hurt, you can't be there. If you want to go there, if you're allowed to, I don't even know if you'd be allowed to. But if you don't have to be at the Raw taping and we just want to go hang out with her while I'm wrestling on Raw." Okay, that's fine. And then I'll see her for lunch. Fine. End of story. Then Tyson can spend an actual birthday with, with Natty. Natty. They could do something fun. Because then Tyson surprises Natty saying, like, oh, where we're going out. Oh, we're going to my sister's house. Right. Not cool. No. <clears throat> Not cool. There's have very you, little communication going on between those two. Have you ever thrown a surprise party for Corey? Or has Corey ever thrown for uh, you? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, done, I've done one. Okay, did you th do something that you would like for her surprise party, or do no. something that she would like? It was all of her friends. Okay, and and their boyfriends. Okay, and it was a a, a French restaurant, and I don't I don't know if, about French food. Okay, uh, yeah, but I, I did that for her. You and did it was, okay. It, we had a great time, uh, you know, and I'm gregarious, so and, I'm able to talk to everybody, even if and, I barely know them. And that's my and that's the problem with Tyson Kidd here. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna so. surprise you because we're gonna do something I want to do. Right. Not cool. And you know what? With even Tyson, it might not even be what he really wants to do. He's doing it out of the fear of his mother. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's the bane of our existence. Okay? When a woman is about to lose her son to another woman, it's a dangerous time because I saw that woman's age. You know, the mother, she's she's at that age where it starts getting menopause. You know, that's like you're PMSing constantly. You know, you're drying up. And she's like, I'm about to lose my son to this woman. And I love Natty. But you Are we know, able to censor that at all? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, <that's, laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That, that suits that perfectly. The kids out there. I, oh, hey, there's God. no girls here. Hey. This is what happens when Corey's not Come here. On. Come on. Bring it on. Uh, no, but, uh, but seriously, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, five-star rating, please. <laughs> so, uh, again, You've been a very good boy. Yeah. Again, I'm sorry, guys. But, yeah, that's the thing. Natty, you, you can't expect a whole week. That's very scary for a man. That's putting a lot of pressure on us. Valentine's Day, birthdays, they suck for men. You know? Mm -hmm. Where's our where's our Valentine's Day? I'm all about equality. You've been a very good boy. March fourteenth. Y'all look it up. It's the birthday? Happy birthday. birthday. No, March fourteenth. March fourteenth is the Valentine's Day for men. Why? Because uh, some guys on the internet thought it would be a good idea for us to get a month a, after a actual month Valentine's after, Day. Yeah. Okay. It's, I'll have uh, to look into that. Involves the yeah, I, I I learned something now. <laughs> now I really learned something. So, Natty is pissed at livid. Tyson. Livid. Livid. Angry even. As she should be. Shame at on you, Tyson, Tyson for that. So she bought this brand new dress to go out to some fancy restaurant for her birthday, and this is the actual birthday, not the week, the actual day. 
So she storms back up to her hotel room and calls up her friend, Jarrett. Jarrett, who owns some tanning, spray tan salon in Calgary, a longtime friend of hers. She went and visited him, got a spray tan there. They, you know, joking, innocent flirting, nothing, nothing bad, just joking, catching up. And they decide to go out to dinner. And Jarrett rents out an entire restaurant. Business, business in Calgary for spray tans must be really good. Yeah. That's a great place for things like sp- spray tans. Did he rent it out or did the camera crew, Total Divas, WWE, rent it out? The TV show said he rented it out. All right. We'll go with that. <laughs> And so they're the only ones in this fancy steakhouse. Jarrett seems like a seems like a good guy. Seems like a nice guy. He's yeah. courting her, being very gentleman like. Uh huh. And eventually admits, all right, I gotta say something before it's too late between you and Tyson, but I've always had some feelings for you. I think I could treat you more like a princess than than Tyson. You deserve all these nice things. You deserve a birthday week. You deserve a birthday dinner with a rented out uh, restaurant. Say, saying all the right things to say. Oh, because you're here one night a year, and you can just say, I would give you all this because I gave it to you this one night. Tyson's the one dealing with carrying the weight all year round. <laughs> He's carrying the weight. But Jared's suggesting that he could be that one. He could be the one. He could be that one and carrying that natty, weight. Natty. Natty. <laughs> Shame on you, Natty. You know better than that. You, did you not know he was going to say that tonight when you called him up? Why? Granted, it's she did call like, him up. It's not like Tyson is hanging out with women who aren't his, his family. Yeah, he's hanging out with his mom and his sister he right didn't now. ditch her for another woman. He just for two other women who are in his family. It's his sister and his mom. Shame on you, Natty. So as much as Tyson is <laughs> is a little, can I say? Can I say? Can no, I can't say. No, that? a pansy. <laughs> since Tyson's such a pansy in this episode, that is all he's guilty of is being a pansy mother's uh, mama's boy. Wow, jeez, that is all, all he's guilty of. But Natty, shame on you. You knew what was going on here. Guilty. I don't think Natty's that guilty. I don't think she's that guilty. Oh. She didn't do anything. She she is cheating on him. I'm sorry. In did here. You, did you In here. She loved hearing that stuff from Jared. Of course, because that's the stuff that a and woman she knows. she knew that he was going to say that stuff to her. Look. She pulled him in. No, no, and now, no. now Tyson's got to sit home and watch this episode. <laughs> talk, what happened? No, here, here's my take on it. You got a girl that, in her mind, has been treated like dirt. Has been treated worse than their cats, as we saw last week. That's how she feels. Yeah. That's how she feels. She feels unappreciated. She wants to feel like a woman. Like, I don't know, maybe the way John Cena and Daniel Bryan treat the Bellas. You know, treat like a woman, like like someone really wants to be with me. Like someone wants to be. Someone that doesn't want to. Just spend my birthday with something he wants to do or go get married at a courthouse. Woo. So here's this guy who's a longtime friend. It wasn't like some guy that she just met. They've been friends for 15 years. Dangerous. And he he admits these feelings, which maybe she knew about. Maybe she didn't. We don't know. She knew. She's a woman. They're smart. <laughs> but They're intuitive. But there's then the time where she could – she could have said right then and there, Jarrett, stop. I appreciate you. I like you as a friend, but as you know, Tyson's even though we have fights, he's the only one I love. And what did she do instead? She did not do that because she's questioning whether or not Tyson's the right guy for her. How long have they been together? Twelve years? Right. And they just started planning the wedding? That's a problem. Yes. And a big problem is is this man's broken. Not we're not just talking about his, his ACL, right? I believe it was ACL or kneecap or it was something huge. Something around there. Something major. This man is broken, not just physically, mentally too. When a man can't provide for his woman, it's hard. It's hard for a man like Tyson Kidd. 
and he's been laid up for a year. And who's been paying the bills? Who's been taking care of business? Natty. Mm -hmm. She's the she's the money bags. Mm -hmm. She's she's uh, the provider, you know. And he doesn't feel like I, he clearly shows like even he even cut off like she's standing there in lingerie last episode, and he just won't even look at her. It Why? Like he was doing that on. He wasn't doing that to be mean to her. He was doing that because uh, out of fear, he was avoiding the pain. Avoiding the pain. What it, kind it, of pain are you going to get from seeing a beautiful woman in lingerie standing a foot away from you? Because there's two type of pair. Uh, Dr. Josh is coming in. There's a paradigm shift in the brain. <laughs> you either avoid pain or you pursue pleasure. That are the two things that everyone always does in every decision they make. And when a woman, when your beautiful girlfriend comes walking out in lingerie, you can either pursue the pleasure mm -hmm. and enjoy life or you can avoid the pain of feeling that pleasure and knowing that you aren't good enough for her. And that's how he feels. That's why he's avoiding. He's running back to his mom. No, why would you feel that you're not good enough for her if she is doing this for you? Because we're stupid. Maybe you are. Men are stupid. Maybe you are. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm telling you. No, no, I mean, and, and, and who, I'm not, I don't know. If I got burnt up in a fire, I might act like that too. We don't, I don't know. But it, what you try, this is, it's a psychological thing. Men are supposed to be wild at heart. We're wild. We're supposed to be warriors. And when you're, when, you're, when you're laid up like that, especially a physical warrior like a wrestler, like Tyson Kidd is, I know it's got to be tough for him. And I can be very sympathetic for him in this time because I, I can see what he's going through, just like what I can see what Arion's going through. You know, and, and so when that's happening – I understand why Natty's doing this, why she's straying away. And Tyson, if he if he cares anything about her, he know, he needs to know that he's pushing her away. And maybe he's thinking she can do better. Now, I don't know if Jared's better or not. The man's claiming he can because he sat in an empty restaurant and said that one day out of the year. You don't get any you, you don't get credit for that, Jared. I won't he give him credit. He owns a successful Tanning salon, tanning salon in Calgary. In Calgary. <laughs> God bless him. He must be an amazing <laughs> businessman. That's, a, that's, that going. that's a great place to have that. Wow. But so, yeah, but we we could keep arguing about this all the time, and we can because no girls are here to stop no us girls and say give that. their opinion. <laughs> but you know, if you're a, if you happen to be a female listening or watching this show, tell us your opinions because I'm curious who gets sided more if people side more with Josh or with myself. But on that note, next week we got the bachelorette party for Natty. In the midst of all this, they're still getting married. Wow. They're still getting married. Oh, TV. I don't really know how many predictions are in this. But again, I don't know why we do predictions for reality shows. But, <laughs> but, yeah, Natty's bachelorette party is next week in Vegas. So I'm predicting, based on the commercials, a lot of drunkenness, and it doesn't go well a or as planned. <laughs> a lot of hooking up, a lot of second thoughts. And also next week, we finally meet Justin Gabriel on Total Divas. Yes, we got teased like weeks ago. And, and we saw it. I love I'm it. excited to see what happens with 19-year-old JoJo and I think 30 or 31-year-old. I think he's 32, 32-year-old Justin Gabriel. Woo. So we will see what happens with that next week. But in the meantime, Showtime Josh Padgett. How can people reach out to you? You can get me on Twitter, Showtime Josh. That's all. all right. right there. And you can check him out on Monday Night Raw after Buzz as well. Oh, yeah, and uh, me and Corey do White on Rice on Iconic Eye TV on Tuesdays. All right. And she, hopefully she'll be back up and running by then. Cool. Yeah, hopefully she, yeah, she's a little on the weather today, but hopefully she'll be feeling better for SmackDown After Buzz, which is coming very soon on Friday nights here that Corey and I will be a part of. And you can follow me on Twitter, at CRosieVOC. Got two other quick things I need to plug real quick, actually, this week. Um, if you are listening to this and you are a wrestling fan, I do a show for the Insane Wrestling League, and we have our WrestleMania of the year this Sunday called New Era 8, live on iPay-Per-View and on your Roku device for only $3. You see wrestlers like Michael Elgin, the Young Bucks, Joey Ryan, B-Boy, many, many more. I call the action. Please check that out. As well as this week, I'm actually going to be a guest on the Curtain Jerks Comedy Wrestling Podcast on the Comedy Podcast Network. So all I'm right. looking forward to hanging out with those guys, talking after buzz, talking wrestling, talking all that fun stuff. So make sure you check that out later on in the week as well. So that's it for this week with two guys running total divas. For Showtime, Josh Padgett, I am Christian Rosenberg. We will see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.